Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. You guys know what time it is. Time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And a number of people have aware of me that a video was done by Omar Isov, the shaman philosopher of YouTube fitness, and Dr. Eric Helms, PhD, expert in natural bodybuilding, even though he's admittedly done a steroid cycle, in which they discussed if bodybuilding was healthy or not. So let me go ahead and put on my plus five hat of speechcraft and let's talk about this. Now, before I rip them too hard about the sport thing, at least Eric admitted bodybuilding is not a sport. Bodybuilders need to admit that because when you admit that bodybuilding is not a sport, you actually find that the injury rate is really high because they, they really wanted to dodge the question. They tried to dodge the question and sugarcoat a lot of this while admitting bodybuilding is unhealthy. And I'm talking about natural bodybuilding, not necessarily enhanced. And they made that distinction. And I define bodybuilding the same way that they do. It's competitive bodybuilding. It's not going to the gym and building muscle and, and following a healthy diet. All right, that's called a fitness lifestyle. And I don't think bodybuilding carries over to that. I think they're completely separate. Just like I would never call uh, people who train for strength power lifters. They're living the power lifter lifestyle. All right, that's not the same thing. Uh, but they kind of pointed out, well, you know, compared to other strength endeavors and lifting related disciplines, it's going to be lower injury risk. It's like a third of what CrossFit, power lifting, Olympic lifting, all that is, guys. Because it's not a sport. Like, you can't compare a non-sport to actual sports and, and justify the fact that it has a lower injury risk. Okay, compare it to other performing arts or beauty pageants. Does bodybuilding have a higher or lower injury risk than Miss America contests do? Or localized beauty pageants? I bet you it has a higher injury risk to other beauty pageants. Or how about performing arts such as, you know, again, theater or drama, getting up and, and um, oral interpretation or reading poetry in public? Right, another a form of performing art. Is it a higher or lower injury risk? Well, it's much higher injury risk and injury rate than all of those. So if we're going to place it in the correct category, it is a higher injury rate. And dieting down to the really low body fat percentages is part of where the extra injury risk comes from. Lifting weights, even lifting fairly heavy weight, even training really heavy in normal environments when you're not pushing the absolute limits and you're using good form or you don't diet down ultra lean, actually has a very, very low injury risk, right? There's a difference between uh, hitting a training max on the deadlift once a week versus going to a powerlifting meeting, grinding out your all-out best time max after slapping yourself and snorting a bunch of ammonia, right? There's a little bit of a difference there. It's the same thing over with, with bodybuilding and everything else. That dieting down actually makes the actual training riskier. That's part of where their injury risk comes from. But they try to... The, to whitewash it and say that, oh, it's a lower injury risk than these others. Yeah, but it's not a sport. It's a performing art. And when you compare it to other performing arts, it actually does have a higher injury risk. Not saying it's particularly high injury risk without drugs involved, because without the drugs, it, it is still a fairly low injury risk endeavor. The problem we come to is the eating disorders and the body fat. And that's kind of the thing that they admitted, that there's been a problem when it's been looked at that a lot of people who, when they're surveyed, they find that a very large percentage of people who get involved in bodybuilding have a history of eating disorders, and that's based upon surveys. It tends to attract people who are already messed up. And let's, let's, we need to be clear on that. And all you guys out there who freak out talk about, oh, you got to be ripped, you got to be peeled. You look like shit if you're not 6% body fat. You guys or the, who they're talking about. You have a distorted body image already yourself. Like if you think that a person has to have ripped abs and be peeled in order to look athletic or be lean or look good, you already have a mental illness. You should probably go see a therapist at that point. That's just reality. Uh, because there's nothing wrong with a man staying between 10 and 19% body fat year round. All right, that is ex an extremely healthy range. That is healthy. That's athletic. You cannot call a person fat who stays in that range. All right. Uh, but people get ridiculous, and they do break down the social media parts of that. But they, they pointed out the, the eating disorder history the people who are attracted to it, predisposed to it, and then the people who develop binge eating disorders in their own form of anorexia as a result of competition. It's pretty high. I've met people who suffer from it. I've met significant numbers of people who compete in bodybuilding who have extreme crippling body image disorder. It is mentally unhealthy as an endeavor, and it has social ramifications for that.
The other thing they pointed out is again the, the very low body fat percentage. That when it really comes down to it, the level of body fat that they push isn't necessarily healthy. Burger like it's a competitive environment. That's right. But that point is never stressed. You know, it's kind of like Eric jumped in there and kind of said, yeah, but I always put it in the perspective of I'm not telling you that you need to go this lean. It's perfectly fine to be at a healthy lean body fat and be nowhere near me. But you guys all push this stuff and none of you admit that it's actually destructive to the body. Because that's the problem with it is that bodybuilding has created standards for what they think people should be doing that gets pushed into the, the social media because it's kind of got this whole following online and bodybuilders are being promoted as fitness experts and fitness uh, figures and everything else on social media. And that includes people like Eric, who I don't know why he's talking about muscle building. Eric doesn't have that much muscle anymore. Um, I don't know, maybe you should quit dieting down so lean and actually train hard for once in your life instead of doing this silly volume stuff you're getting from Tad Broenfeld. Uh, why don't you try actually training hard again? You might build some muscle, Eric. But the point is, uh, they're promoting this low level of body fat without saying explicitly, I'm doing this for competitive reasons, but it's probably it's not safe to do this. There's something broken in me that makes me be driven towards this. And that's why I can respect someone like George Lehman, who is in strength sports, which is my thing. George Lehman will admit what he does is harmful. To compete at the level that he competes at and subject his body to what he does is harmful. He doesn't recommend you do it. And he says it's because it's the only way I can be happy, that I can't be happy if I can't deadlift 900 pounds. It's essential to my happiness because I'm broken inside. I mean, I respect the hell out of George for admitting stuff like that because he, he, he's honest about it. And he admits he has psychological problems that drive him to be good at what he does. But he also says, if I could be happy peeling potatoes, I'd go peel potatoes instead of trying to deadlift 900 pounds. But I'm broken inside. And if you could be happy peeling potatoes, maybe you should, you should consider doing that instead. Right? And the, the bodybuilders, they don't want to admit that, that there's something psychologically wrong that makes them think that they need to diet down to this level of body fat. And then I blame the bodybuilding organizations also. They know bodybuilding didn't require you to be as lean 30, 40, 50 years ago as they want you to be lean now. They know it's harmful to the competitors. They know based upon the research, both physical physiological, blood work, hormonal, psychological, that having someone go to 6% body fat is harmful. They create judging criteria that are directly harmful to the competitors that hurt them. And they're required to do it, to be competitive. And there's no way out of that. It is not possible to not harm yourself with that body fat. It's dangerous. Uh, you know, at least with a lot of other sports, it is possible to compete without harming yourself. It can be done. Things happen, but it's not like standards are put in place that say if you don't reach this standard, which we know is harmful, physically proven to be harmful, you can't compete, you can't win, you can't place. Right? That's not done in other endeavors. And that's what bodybuilding needs to come to terms with. I wouldn't be so harsh on bodybuilding if they didn't promote this ultra level of leanness that the actual heads of these these physique committees know hurts people. They know it does. Eric knows it does. He basically admits it in the video that it's harmful. And look, people are saying, well, Jason, isn't obesity a bigger problem? Sure, obesity is a bigger problem than this. But we don't fix one extreme by pushing people to another. You don't do something that's really bad and say, hey, this is bad. Uh, and more people do this one really bad thing. So we want to push you to the other extreme that hurts you just as much because less people do it. That, that doesn't make sense. That's not logical. That's not reasonable. All right, we need to be pushing people to say, hey, you should be at a healthy body fat. You should be healthy. You should be fit. You should be athletic. See, I don't see a problem with that, but that's not compatible with bodybuilding. And therein lies the problem. They brought up the topic that social media has influenced its people in a negative way, and it is creating body image disorders and eating disorders because all these fit pros are getting down contest lane and promoting it as if it's a desirable thing, and then it is causing harm down the road because people are seeing these, these ridiculous things and then they're actually thinking that's where credibility comes from. They get to a point to where if a person isn't at 7% body fat that they're not credible as a source of fitness advice. I would say that if a person's at 7% body fat, they're not credible because of that. How can a person who is intentionally harming themselves and harming their own body with their physical actions be a source of fitness information? I would argue the opposite. 
the getting that lean disqualifies you. Not being above it disqualifies you. Someone who diets to 7% body fat shouldn't be giving health and fitness advice because that person is physically harming themselves directly for you on social media. They're engaging in directly harmful physical activity and promoting it as health. That should disqualify them from being giving advice. I mean, let's be realistic here. But they kind of pull this whole thing of, well, it is a problem. It is it's creating a problem. But it's like Eric doesn't want to admit, and all these bodybuilders don't want to admit that they're the cause of the problem. No one would be thinking you need to be 6 or 7% body fat if they weren't there promoting it. And they are promoting it. They're promoting it because they don't say all the time, hey, I choose to do this because I, I have this as my expression and I know it's bad for me. It'd be kind of like if you smoke cigarettes all the time, you should probably have a Surgeon General's warning and say, I'm addicted to cigarettes. You probably shouldn't do this. You know, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be the same sort of thing? But instead, they call themselves fit pros. They call themselves fitness professionals, nutrition advisors. Right? That's what they do. They're promoting what they're doing as if it's compatible with a healthy lifestyle. It's not. It's not compatible with fitness. It's not healthy. And they damn well know it. And that's why I wish they would admit it when they come out and say, look, we know getting this lean isn't healthy. We probably shouldn't be promoting it, but our competitive endeavor that we love does. And the ridiculous part to compare it to something like football, and that's what he did early on, at least in football, competitors get their college paid for at least that tons of people become millionaires off of it there's not a lot of money in bodybuilding only a handful of people in the serious ifbb really make a good living doing it right and by a good living i mean what the lowest rank nfl players make would be a good living off of it only a handful reach that a tiny handful you go to the natural world none of them none of them make that sort of money not one it costs people money. They don't make money. They don't get scholarships from it. They pay to play. It's not a career. It's a damaging hobby that hurts people. <laughs> there's a little bit of a difference between that. I'm not saying football can't be detrimental. It is. But at least there's a payoff. At least you can get a scholarship. At least you can get a million dollar contract out of it. At least there's a payoff for the harm that comes with it. Not saying that makes the harm right, because I don't necessarily approve of that either. I think that's a problem. But there's a big difference here. And the problem is that it ends up promoting this same sick, self-destructive behavior of telling people, of showing people, hey, I'm 7% body fat. Here it is, as if it's a good thing. Instead of plastering a big warning on it, please don't do this to yourself. I have a body image disorder. That would be a little bit better if they just did that. Then I wouldn't rag on it all the time. I'd be like, well, now they're not promoting, they're not promoting self-harm anymore, right? That would be a good thing because as it stands now, they are. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.